Welcome to Auburn and one of the most compelling venues in the country for college football. It's the SEC opener for the Auburn Tigers. It's a new day. War Eagle. And welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Tonight, the Mississippi State Bulldogs taking on the Auburn Tigers, the 87th meeting all time between these two teams. From a sold out Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, as we look at the series history, these two teams have played the last six years in a row to open their respective SEC conference play. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones alongside Brock Hewitt, Maria Taylor downstairs joining us in just a minute. Hey, partner, anytime you play in the hyper competitive SEC, you have to put some hay in the barn as soon as you get the opportunity. Having said that, this game's so important for so many different reasons for both teams. Why? I think that's absolutely right. I think externally, there's really a couple forces at play here. There is that sense of urgency and knowing that if you can get this one, it would sure go a long ways to getting yourself to an ever important bowl game for someone building the foundation as Gus Malzahn is. Internally, Mark, from that locker room standpoint, it validates all the work you've done. He's tried to set a new tempo, a new edge here. And if you can get that first win, especially in the SEC, it really validates what you've done over spring and fall camp. Yeah, a lot of anticipation and stark contrast to last year. Brock, we were here when the program seemingly bottomed out last season at 3-9. and nine, That loss to Georgia. Since that time, they've hired their old offensive coordinator, Gus Malzahn, who was the guy at the helm of the offense when they won the national title just a few short years ago. Where does he begin to rebuild the program? I think most important tonight, and he said it a number of times with us, we we have to set that edge. What that means to me is you've got to go out and hit. Everybody sees Gus Malzahn's system and they think it's rink-a-dink and, and all tricks, and it's not. It's downhill football. It's hard-nosed football. And we saw with our own eyes a season ago, this team struggled to really hit defensively. I know he, I know he wants to see them cut it loose. And you know what? So do I tonight. People up and down College Avenue talking about getting aboard the Gus bus. Here they come. Welcome everyone back to Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama for this 87th edition of Mississippi State against Auburn. Head coach Dan Mullen in his fifth year at the helm in Starkville says he likes his team's unselfishness and consistency so far. This in light of the fact, Maria Taylor, they were missing seven starters last week because of injuries. What's the story now? Well, you're right, Jonesy, and a lot of those in critical positions, the starting running back, Ladarius Perkins, was out with an ankle injury. He will return today and was full speed in warm-ups. Also, starting safety, Nico Whitley. He's going to return today, but all eyes have been on starting quarterback Tyler Russell, and bad news coming out of the Mississippi State locker room. Dan Mullen told me about 20 minutes before kick he is not cleared for contact. That means Dak Prescott will be shouldering the load today and starting for Mississippi State. That's a big change going into the SEC opener, guys. Yeah, it certainly is, Maria. Tyler Russell suffered a concussion in the season opener at against Oklahoma State. Brock, how does that affect what the Bulldogs do here? Well, the good news is Dak Prescott got a game under his belt and a start a week ago against Alcorn State. And to be quite honest with you, I think in many ways, at least through the first couple weeks of this season, Dak's skill set fits this offense a little better and what I mean by that is Dan Mullen knows outside on the perimeter he's very raw he's very inexperienced and he's got to have a quarterback that can make some plays himself and especially in the run game to offset some of the deficiencies outside so I'd expect to see Dak carrying the ball quite a bit tonight
Have I told you before how much I love college football? Nothing like the SEC for this kind of atmosphere. Mississippi State winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Auburn receiving back deep, Quan Bray and Trey Mason. Auburn has been one of the most proficient teams in the country the last several years, returning kicks for touchdowns. And we're underway. Mason six yards deep, and he'll take an knee. Well, it'll be first and ten for quarterback Nick Marshall, the 6'1 junior out of Pine View, Georgia. Former transfer from Georgia, former DB and junior college player subsequent to that out of Garden City Community College. It was 10 of 17, a couple of touchdown passes last week, and Brock, he's improved week to week, albeit early in the season. How? He has, but he's only been here five weeks. The first time for Gus Malzahn in his history that he's never had a quarterback through spring ball. It's been very conservative to begin this season. I'd expect here early tonight, opener of the SEC, and we'll see a, a change of game plan, a conservative in nature play calling. He's going to pass it on first down, and he completes it out to the 35-yard line. Sammy Coates making the catch just shy. The first down picked up about nine. Calhoun making the stop on the play. <laughs> Auburn going with that hurry-up offense, high tempo, although not as fast as Gus Malzahn wants it yet. Corey Grant. On the carry, he's the speedster, and he gets the first down. We're going to see a three-pronged approach at tailback tonight, Brock. Mason, Grant, and Artis Payne. How's that work? They're all going to split up the carries. I'll tell you what else you're going to see. A ton of zone reads, something that Mississippi State really struggled week one. Until you prove you can stop it, they're going to get a heavy dose of it. Grant gets the handoff on the fly sweep. He's the home run hitter, and he picks up the first down into Mississippi State territory. But Narek McKinney making the stop and a gain of 10. The beauty of the three backs, you just said it. He's the speed, the home run hitter. Artis Payne, 44, is the bulldozer. And Trey Mason is Mr. Versatility. Artis Payne now in the backfield. Pass complete. That's Lewis. Made two people miss. And tiptoes out of bounds for the first down. Well, let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Keep an eye on number 35. He is the fullback, the lead blocker. So often he will take you to where the football is going. And defensively, the linebackers from Mississippi State, be it in the zone read, the short intermediate passes, they've got to be so active defensively. They spot the ball at the 36. First and 10. Artis Payne on the carry. Payne, the top running back in junior college a season ago out of California. Picked up five on the play, brought down by P.J. Jones. A lot going on. You underscored it on the line of scrimmage tonight. Second and five. Grant back in. Artis Payne comes to the sidelines. complete to Davis and Davis is brought down by Calhoun no gain on the play. Marcus Davis. second and five third and six or less this season check that third and five third and six or less nine of 13 a really high percentage this is where Gus Malzahn wants to keep the third down situations that's why the calls are going to be conservative in nature early Grant, the back set to the right of quarterback Nick Marshall. Marshall to pass again, completes it. And a first down inside the 15. Juzama. A 16 yard gain on the play. And here comes Tempo. We get a quick fumble. Loose. No signal yet. Mississippi State player right there. And it's recovered by Jefferson. Mississippi State football. Check that note. They're saying Auburn football. They got it back. 
Jefferson was right there, though. Almost got it here, Brock. There's your zone read. You'd think he would get it, but an wow. excellent job of fighting there by the quarterback. He knows that would have been a critical takeaway and turnover, and instead he fights for it and gets it back. Second and 13 after the three-yard loss. And here's your fullback. Here's Jay Prosh. He goes, the ball typically follows. That's incomplete. It's third down and long coming up. Brock, how much trust do they put on their quarterback at this point of the season? You talked about it being early, and they've left it kind of conservative, right? Very much so. And in fact, that third and five earlier is where you want to be, the third and 13, what you have to avoid here. And this is where I'd like to get him on the move. Let him use his strength, which is that ability to run. Get to the three for the first down. Under heat. And sacked back at the 27-yard line. So the Bulldog defense makes a stand. And now Auburn looking at fourth down. And on the flip side, what a tremendous call from defensive coordinator Jeff Collins. What do you do against an inexperienced quarterback? Well, you heat it up in third and passing situations. That's what he's going to see tonight. A heavy dose of pressure and blitz when it's third and passing downs. And a very nice job to make this a more difficult field goal attempt. Cody Parkey attempting this one from 41 yards out. 28 of 37 on his career. And he knocks this one through. So the Tigers put points on the board, although it wasn't a touchdown on their first possession. Back right after this. I'm Wendy Nix in our college football studios. An update from College Station, Texas. Seven-point game until A.J. McCarron finds Justin Fowler in the end zone. A&M has since scored, but it's 49-42 with under 20 seconds to play. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. Back here, an 11-play, 52-yard scoring drive capped by a field goal. Used up 4.07 on the clock, and Auburn getting on the scoreboard first, looking for their first SEC win in over 650 days, Brock Heward. They've lost 10 consecutive conference games. Robert Johnson and Jamion Lewis back deep, and this one's going to go through the end zone. Well, Tyler Russell, as you heard from Maria Taylor, not scheduled to start or play today. He's the usual starter, suffered a concussion in the first game against Oklahoma State. Thus, Dak Prescott, the 6'2 sophomore, will get the start last week, throwing for 174 yards, a couple of touchdowns in that win against Alcorn State. How is he different from Russell? More vocal, more animated, more athletic in their run game, but more limited as a passer than the fifth-year senior Russell. Perkins also back this week. He missed last week because of an ankle injury. He's in the backfield, number 27. And there's Prescott. Stopped up right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. McKinsey making the stop. Prescott actually ran for the first touchdown of the game last week against Alcorn State. Second down and 10 coming up. be Josh Robinson on the carry picks up about four on the play as we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-a it will be imperative Gabe Jackson's the best player on this Mississippi State team he is their left guard imperative throughout the night that they create movement at the line of scrimmage because if they don't the zone read doesn't work it puts more pressure on an inexperienced quarterback and you get the 85,000 here going on passing situations Prescott with time, finds his man complete for the first down of the 40-yard line. Robert Johnson picks up 11. And he stood in there and looked pretty poised, Brock. I can tell you how huge that is in your first passing attempt. Excellent poise, as you said. The clear route inside and just finding that nice little soft spot in the, in the zone. And look at the velocity on that throw. That's a confident throw. Dax played some football here. This is not a freshman who's going to be wide-eyed. He's played plenty of ball, had to start a week ago. But that sure helps. Confidence builder out the gate. Perkins in motion. Prescott going to take off on his own. Look, guys, a designated run for the quarterback, and he makes the most of it. 
into Auburn Tiger territory at about the 43 yard line. Hosley making the stop on the play. A very poised quarterback coming out of the gate here for the Bulldogs picks up 16. And that's the element he brings and in talking to the Auburn coaching staff. I think they expected the other. They expected Tyler Russell to go tonight. But they knew all along that Prescott would bring more of that dimension of the run and they've got to prepare and play it better than they have here early. First down and 10 Prescott. With a three step drop and completes it again down to the 35. That's Joe Morrow. This is a young receiving core. They pick up nine right there. Welcome everyone who are just joining us. Alabama defeating Texas A&M just a few moments ago. That score becoming final. That game ending in College Station. Here it's the SEC opener for Mississippi State and Auburn for the sixth consecutive time they're meeting each other. Auburn took the ball in the opening series, drove it down the field, capped it with a field goal, and they lead three to nothing. This is Mississippi State's first possession of the game offensively. Prescott, the starting quarterback, in place of Tyler Russell, fires another completion down to the 29. Good for six to Robert Johnson. And unlike the 49-42 shootout down in College Station, touchdowns will be a premium tonight. You saw Auburn drive it between the 20s, settle for the field goal. Mississippi State in week one against Oklahoma State, only three points to show that entire ball game. Finding a way to score touchdowns, especially on the road in SEC contests, so very critical. First and ten. Prescott given all kinds of time. Fires incomplete. That was intended for Robert Johnson. Jonathan Mincy making the play on the ball that time. Incomplete. Mincy was one of the more outspoken players for Auburn. Saying, you know, this is a big game. It's a chance to get our name around the league and show that Auburn is back. That's really one of the underlying themes of the game today. Second and ten. Watch the line of scrimmage and how much movement the Bulldogs can create. Prescott up the middle. Boy, he's a pretty big guy, isn't he? Gets the first down, or at least very well near it. Yeah, they're going to spot it so that he moves the chains. Picked up 11. And that was an excellent job in getting to the second level. And if you create some scenes for Dak, he's going to make you pay. He's very, very physical. I remember a Mississippi State game a season ago in Starkville. And yes, Dan Mullen referenced the name Tim Tebow, and he said, hey, he's not there yet. But from the style of play, the way he likes to play, he likes contact, he likes getting hit, and he likes going north and south. Morrow in motion to the top of your screen. Prescott takes a little counter step and is stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. You mentioned Dan Mullen and Tim Tebow in the same breath. Of course, he was the former offensive coordinator for Urban Meyer when Tebow was there. Uh, what's your characterization of how he's brought his offensive imprint to Mississippi State so far. Well this is going to be a bit of a challenge for him because last year you remember they were 7 and 0 and with Tyler they were throwing it all over the yard. Tyler Russell's the all time most efficient passer in Mississippi State history. But Prescott plays more to that style that you got so accustomed to in Gainesville with the big bruiser under center. On second and 11. Handed off to Jamie on Lewis, the team's leading receiver. It's a very young receiving core. Got together during the summer with Russell and Prescott waking up at 7 a.m. doing some extra work. Third down coming up. One to go. And we saw defensively a blitz in a situation like this on an inexperienced quarterback trying to make that field goal more, more difficult. Will Ellis Johnson heat up the pocket here? Third and ten. Bringing a little heat on this play. Miscommunication between receiver and quarterback, and it's fourth down. Malcolm Johnson, the intended receiver. What went wrong on that one? Some good press man coverage. One of Ellis Johnson's favorite blitzes to bring those linebackers right up the middle, and unfortunately, Mississippi State receiver stumbles and bumbles and plays dead at that point. Devin Bell into attempt the field goal from 35 yards out. Two of three on the season. And he 
missed it. Pushed it to the right. What looked like a pretty impressive drive. Ends up with no points on the board when all is said and done. Just underway here in Auburn, Alabama. Conference opener for both teams. A game of inches, as always. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Volkswagen Passat. That's the power of German engineering. And Kingsford Charcoal. Everyone's a fan when you grill for game day with Kingsford Charcoal. Look at one of the enduring traditions here at Auburn University, the Tiger Walk. Part of the pregame ceremony. Auburn leading three to nothing, just underway here in the first quarter. First and ten for the Tigers from their own 20-yard line after that missed field goal from Mississippi State. Corey Grant in the backfield for the Tigers. Marshall completes it. Gray made one guy miss and picked up about three and a half yards on the play. Second down and seven. Changing personnel and really important for players to know their personnel grouping, obviously. Window dressing, all the motions and shifts and multiple formations to run the same plays over and over, but a different look to the defense. Trey Mason in the backfield. Going up top, has a man incomplete. In and out of the arms of Quan Bray. And there's a flag down to the play as well. He got him behind Justin Cox that time. There is no questioning the arm strength of quarterback Nick Marshall. Talk about that as the day goes on. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. The penalty is declined. Third down. Watch a young quarterback use his eyes here to affect the corner. He's going to actually pump Justin Cox. And that little movement right there and the eyes looking into the seam inside created the opportunity and an excellent throw and a play there. you got to finish on the other end. Mason in the backfield. Look at Mississippi State defensively trying to give a young quarterback all sorts of different pictures to look at. Third and seven, he fumbles the snap. And he just made it happen anyway. Gray, Quan, gone. Touchdown. Going to go for two here after the career long pass. And they get the two point conversion. Ryan White, Chris Davis teaming up, and Brandon Fuse. One of the signatures of Gus Malls on the offensive creativity. Partner, if you tell me they drew it up with the fumble, I'm going to look at you cross-eyed. <laughs> Tigers leading 11-0 when we come back. Tonight on ESPN's college football finale, James White and the number 20 Badgers face their first true test. When they face the Sun Devils D led by Will Sutton. Wisconsin against Arizona State tonight, 10.30 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Big day for the Pac-12, a big win for UCLA at Nebraska. Do you know how many times Arizona State has lost to a Big Ten opponent in their place? That would be zero. Wow. Ron Bray after the touchdown, his first touchdown catch this season, the first of his career. 
And this place has come alive since. Once again, out the back of the end zone. Mississippi State actually looked pretty good and proficient on their opening drive. It ended with the missed field goal, but uh, Prescott seems to have found a pretty good rhythm so far. Brock, why? It was a real nice mix of run and pass, and anytime you can establish some of that run game, and he did most of it with his rushing yards, but he was also very comfortable on that first third down pass. That's a good sign for Dan Mullen, his offensive coordinator, Les Kenning, to see the comfort level of the sophomore on the road. Robinson in the backfield. What a play fake. Wide open at the 45. Robert Johnson on the move. Picks up a block and finally tackled at the 13 yard line. They got a whole lot back in a hurry. Jonathan Mincy making a touchdown saving tackle. 61 yards on the game. Well, that's just a complete bust. That corner is seeing the run action inside. He's completely expecting 24. Ryan Smith over the top. Both of their eyes get lost inside. And I talked about a comfort level and a confidence throw. Well, third down conversion's nice. A big chunk play like that's even better. Split back formation. On the reverse, Jamion Lewis getting to the edge. Touchdown, Bulldogs! In two plays. They strike with fury, covering 61 yards. And then this one, Jamion Lewis makes it 11 to 6. His first rushing touchdown this season. The second of his career, now the Bulldogs going for two. And they're not going to get it. Nick Griffin stopped up a yard short. So we're throwing convention out the window with these two offensive masterminds today as head coaches. Flag on the play. Illegal motion. Number six of the offense. The penalty is declined. The extra point is no good. Dan Mullen's team on the scoreboard after this nice run by Lewis. Back with more after this. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. 11 to 6 here. Mississippi State with a two play, 75 yard scoring drive after Auburn's three play, 80 yard scoring drive neither team using up a minute on the clock and this uh, turning into a defensive coordinator's nightmare real quickly 409 to go in the first quarter and Trey Mason back deep for the Tigers joined by Quan Bray who scored the touchdown on the catch on their last drive Will be Mason closest. And let's go back to that last scoring drive by Auburn Brock. What was too, the key? Too many play callers out there don't take advantage of what Gus Malzahn often does, and that's go right back to the play. If you had success with it, even though you don't catch it, you know that you can go after Justin Cox on the outside. Back to back go routes. I know the fumbled snap certainly helped, but if it was effective the first time, and you'll see this throughout the evening, he's more than willing to get right back at the line of scrimmage and go at it. And you've got a corner that's run up and down the sidelines like Cox did, making his first start here. What a great call to go and attack him right again. Looks down in 10. <laughs> Come again. Over the middle. Into traffic and complete. At the 46-yard line, a 20-yard gain, C.J. Uzuma. And I apologize, but Gus Malzahn saw what I just screamed. You had the go route once again wide open. Right now, discombobulated on the back end, Mississippi State defensively not communicating nowhere, anywhere near well enough. From the 45. A little sleight of hand in the handoff. 
to Ricardo Lewis, brought down at about the 48-yard line. Lewis, one of the downfield threats right there for Auburn, picks up three. Second and seven coming up. We'll call it six. Corey Grant in the backfield. the tackles a little slight you would think for that out to midfield at the 50 yard line Brock back to your point what does it do to the defense when you go right back to a play that's worked previously well especially on the outside on the perimeter I, I don't think people think nearly enough it just the fatigue level just go right back at them make them prove they can stop you and that second down call while conservative set up what a very manageable third down situation third and five a great move by Marshall. This is where he can hurt you with his legs. And he picks up the first down, forced out of bounds at the 35. A 15-yard gain by Nick Marshall, the former defensive back at Georgia. Played at Garden City Community College last year. Only been on campus for five weeks. Still becoming accustomed to the nuances of the offense. Mason in behind him, the tailback. First down and ten. On the edge to Lewis. He's got a nice little block and got close to the first down. Mississippi State will not win tonight if they tackle like this in space. The third down earlier, chance to get off the field. This is one of your best tacklers, the guy they call Cheetah, Matthew Welzer. He's trying to rip the ball away. Now you got to finish that tackle in early down situations to do all you can to do what? Get to the third down situations where you can blitz the early down poor tackling, hurting this defense. Mason again into the boundary. Made one tackle miss, picks up the first down, puts his head down and gets inside the 20. Mason picked up a little over a thousand yards last year, got seven on that carry. He has the most SEC experience of the troika of running backs that they use. Him and Grant and Cameron Artis Payne. First and ten. Mason still in there. Rocky talked earlier in our meetings about the importance of Prosh, number 35. We'll get to that in just a moment here. Mason again. 15 yard line. Jay Prosh, the senior six foot kind of fullback. What's his role in this offense? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> he pulls, he cuts down the backside like he does there in the zone blocking scheme. He is just an incredibly physical man that likes mixing it up. As we said in the open, Gus Malzahn trying to bring that edge back, and number 35 goes a long way to doing so. We got a little Wildcat formation, the handoff to Grant. Couldn't get to the corner and brought down at the 12-yard line. The direct snap was not Nick Marshall that time. Picked up four on the play. Third down and three coming up. Artis Payne in the backfield this time. Complete to Reed. Straight on. And got down to the, what, eight-yard line. That's enough for the first down. Picked up four. It'll be first and goal. Third and short. Missed tackle. Now, is that a miss, or is that just a good play with Third and three, you've got to get off the field. You've got to find a way to make that play. Well, there's a nice hit. Maybe a play too late. On Artis Payne, Autry, Danico Autry making the stop. And that's why he's a captain, and that's the difference. That's technique. That's putting your helmet right in his sternum. It's wrapping, and it's driving him down. It's not reaching. It's not grabbing. Mississippi State got to clean it up defensively, Mark, especially on the road. They want to get that ever-important first SEC win. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime. You're watching the SEC. 
on ESPN. With Mississippi State, the Bulldogs taking on the Auburn Tigers. They're at dusk. Uh, absolutely beautiful Second evening for college football. Big result in the books already. Alabama defeating Texas A&M in other SEC play. This is the 11th play of the Auburn drive. Second and goal. Marshall looks the other way. Now sacked back at the 14-yard line. Don Deontay Skinner, one of those talented linebackers, the strength of that Mississippi State defense, making the stop on the play, third and goal. What do you do now, Brock, if you're Auburn? Well, you've got to be very careful here if you're Nick Marshall to not take another sack. That's now two sacks down in the red zone. And he's actually coming off the field, and you're going to see Jonathan Wallace started four games a year ago. This is normal. Expect a sprint pass to the right here. That's Frazier, Kyle Frazier. He hands it off to Grant. Grant getting to the corner all the way down to the two-yard line. And it's fourth down and goal, so they go with the Wildcat. A 12-yard gain, fourth and goal. What do they do? I'll tell you what they've done already is they've busted a bunch of tendencies. And this is smart. You've got to get the three points here. I agree with Gus. You pay off these drives, especially early. But that's now Frazier a couple times in the Wildcat. It's been paying the first couple weeks. I talked about window dressing earlier. Lots of different looks to bust the other side's tendencies. That's another feature of Gus Malzahn's system. Marky in to attempt this field goal from 19 yards out. Sharp angle, but he knocks it through. And Auburn up 14 to 6 just in the way here in the second quarter of play. You gotta have your lineup and your numbers squared away with this game. Back <laughs> after this. Welcome back, Auburn leading Mississippi State 14 to 6. Just underway here in the second quarter, Mark Jones along with Brock Hewitt and Maria Taylor down on the sidelines. Under the lights here at Jordan Hare Stadium. This is Three the, drives, sorry, Mark. Three drives for Auburn. Three scores. Eight points with a two-point conversion, a couple field goals by Parkey. Nick Marshall off to a very nice start. Very, really good mix for Auburn offensively as well, runner pass. And now let's see if Mississippi State can answer. So very important when you go on the road to stay close. Maybe Jamie on Lewis closest to it, but he'll come back out. First down and 10. Let's go downstairs to Maria. Guys, I've been watching the interactions between Nick Marshall and his coaching staff, and the first person that he talks to is Rhett Lashley, his actual offensive coordinator. You can tell that Gus Malzahn is a little bit of the bad cop. Lashley playing the good cop. He told us earlier in this week, and you can tell that Lashley's trying to keep him poised and very calm, talking to him and answering questions as this game progresses. And Maria, they said that he won the job with his poise, and he made plays and took care of the football. Darius Perkins in a tailback, but Prescott keeps it himself out beyond the 30, the 31-yard line. A pickup of six on the play. And Zone Reed's been effective here. This is something that Tyler Russell really doesn't do at all within their system. When we talked earlier about the two quarterbacks who would go. Tyler Russell not cleared for contact tonight. And Dak Prescott is going to get plenty of contact through these 60 minutes. Single back set it's with Arius Perkins coming off that ankle injury against Oklahoma State. Prescott fires and it's incomplete at the 47 yard line intended for Robert Johnson. Well, we haven't said much about Ladarius Perkins, their best tailback, who's coming off that ankle injury. Been a non factor a quarter and a little into the contest so far. There he is, number 27. And here's the blitz look by Ellis Johnson. Let's see if he jumps out of the blitz look. A different picture for the young QB. On the option. That's going to be good enough for a first down. And good running that time by Perkins, who we were just alluding to. Pushed out of bounds by Mincy after a five-yard pickup. Well, if you've got those linebackers up in the gaps, what do you want to do? That, that's a blitz check right there to get out on the edge, get away from all of that mess, 
You saw the audible there by Prescott. Run away from the blitz, even though they bluffed and backed out. That's an excellent job of execution and moving the chains on third down. Josh Robinson in the ball game now. Perkins comes out. Prescott under some heat. And the pass incomplete intended for Brandon Holloway. Hey, Brock, I want to ask you something about Mississippi State. Number 32 for the Bulldogs, Ashton Schumpert, a true freshman, was really impressive last week in their win against Alcorn State. So far, no sign of him. Your thoughts? And he actually just comes in the game. We're going to see, I think, a bunch of personnel from both sides here still learning what you have. For Dan Mullen, even though this is year five, he's got a lot of young people he's figuring out. And for Gus and their staff, year number one, Playing lots of personnel on both sides of the ball. Schumper fumbles it. The freshman put it on the ground. Didn't seem to be a clean exchange. Robinson was there. Couldn't handle the handoff. And a fumble third down coming up. Yeah, the two tailbacks. He brought the freshman in as well. And you just cannot have indecision. You got to put that ball right in the belly. And you got to leave it there in between is death in the zone read. Perkins back in. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Robert Johnson, usually a lot more reliable than that. Prescott put it right there, and it's fourth down. They'll punt. You see D. Ford, his first action of the season, but nursing a knee injury. The fifth-year senior, a very valuable asset, especially as the season evolves. You see the bulky knee brace there. They'd really hope to get him back for SEC play. You'll see him in passing downs tonight. Does a nice job of flushing Prescott, and you're exactly right. Those are the plays on the road that you have got to find a way to make. Look at Swedenberg with that rugby-style punt. It's off a towering kick. Gray all the way back inside his own 20. And Bray fumbles it. Oh, he's been loose a couple of times. Auburn recovering the ball. And Auburn will get the ball first down and 10 on the 15-yard return. Comes to the top of the hour in a couple of minutes, folks. Eminem, yes. Slim Shady debuts his new open on ABC for the Notre Dame Purdue game. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by your local Radio Shack, where you'll find the best in headphones, Bluetooth speakers, and smartphones. Radio Shack. A couple of Heisman winners here at Auburn University. That one, number 34, Vincent Edward. Jackson, a.k.a. Bo, as in Bo knows. One of the great ad campaigns of all time, by the way. I'm not sure about him on skates, but he could probably do it if he wanted to. Right, Brock? <laughs> and the honorary coach tonight down there on the sidelines. Cameron Artis Payne in the backfield gets the carry and picks up a couple of yards. So much folklore and legendary stories. Of Jay Jacobs telling us a story about the hedge as he was a player with Bo back in the day. Yeah, they knew when he was a freshman and he flat-footed, jumped over those hedges for the team <laughs> picture to get up in the stands. <laughs> the guy was just a little different than the rest. Everyone else had to walk around. Bo just jumped it. Trey Mason in the backfield. Second down and eight for Auburn. Second downfield. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Ricardo Lewis, but Marshall put it right there on the spot. No questioning his arm strength. He's, he's got all the throws, doesn't he, Brock? Yeah, he, he can make every throw on this field. Now, some of the touch, some of the command, and that's one I would love to see Lewis actually put two hands out, but tremendous protection. Whenever you have that much separation, that air and much air around you in the pocket, step in your throw and deliver a strike like that one. Third and eight. And gets to the 42-yard line for the first down. Trey Mason in the backfield alongside quarterback Nick Marshall. Plate clock down to three. Davis. And Davis brought down shy of the first down. 
So fourth down coming up for the Tigers. They'll have to punt. So the Mississippi State defense doing a nice job. The strength of this defense, those linebackers, McKinney, Skinner, and Matthew Wells. You see the conversation with head coach right there. This is some of the line tonight that Gus Malzahn's going to walk between letting it rip, letting it go, playing to Nick Marshall's strengths and being aggressive, yet at the same time in the third and eight, not making him a progression passer, seeing the whole field, throwing between the hash marks. Another very easy completion, but a conservative call on third and eight. Stephen Clark punting from his own 25-yard line. Damian Lewis standing his own 20 for Mississippi State. This coming after the first stop of Auburn all night defensively for the Bulldogs' defense. And we'll start this offensive possession inside their own 20-yard line after that 46-yard punt. There's a flag down on the play. Illegal formation on the kicking team. That five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the kick. First down. Well, they'll tack a few yards on in the Bulldogs' favor, and we'll come back on the other side of this. All right, Wendy. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. Derek Milton who had a couple of touchdowns against Alcorn State last week in the backfield alongside quarterback Dak Prescott. If you're just joining us, Tyler Russell, the usual starter, suffered a concussion first game of the season two games ago against Oklahoma State. Not expected to play tonight. This is Milton. And he picks up a couple yards as we go downstairs to Maria. Yeah, guys, this Mississippi State offense is trying to work out the kinks. You see Dak Prescott was working with his running back, Josh Robinson, on the handoff and just practicing with the ball what it's going to look like, what it should feel like. They also talked about it. We're really communicating on the sidelines, trying to get it right in this series. Well, you can tell right there that shot is, hey, when you feel the pressure, and I'll keep it there in your belly, but you feel that pressure, you take it. If not, I'm going to yank it, and I'm going to keep it as he has pretty successfully in that zone read tonight on second and seven Prescott fires a strike complete at the 34 yard line Joe Morrow making the catch picks up 10 working against Ryan White and it's first down and 10 for the Bulldogs Dan Mullen said there was no panic on the part of the coaches when Dak Prescott came in the game in the fourth quarter against Oklahoma State when Russell suffered his injury or last week against Alcorn State. He's acquitted himself very well. Nelton the tailback. Prescott with all day and broken up nicely at the 39-yard line. Well, the chase to the Sprint Cup officially begins Sunday at Chicagoland Speedway as NASCAR's best drivers begin the 10-week battle for the championship. 13 drivers, one champion. The Geico 400 at Chicago Sunday at 1 on ESPN, also live on the Watch ESPN app. On second down and 10, Prescott has missed on six of his last eight passes. As time open down the seam and incomplete. They're going to say no whistle, incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Brandon Hill. But Jermaine Whitehead made a nice hit to shake it loose. Inches away, too many times tonight. And the throw may be just a little behind, but he's actually trying to protect his tight ends away from the contact with Whitehead. We saw a third and 15 with Prescott on the move, a catchable ball tomorrow. He cannot bring in. This is unfortunately pretty reminiscent of the first game of the year against Oklahoma State where Dan Mullen said inches away in individuals, just not making and doing their individual job for the overall team. Third and 10. Little heat, they set up the screen. This is Perkins, and he's got a little bit of room. And Perkins, with a nice gain, gets the first down. A 13-yard gain. Great execution, Brock. 
And I love that call on third down. I love the second down call. Second and 10 is usually a heavy run down. Most tendencies for most offenses, they go play pass. And then third and 10, they're guessing a little heat. They guess right. And Perkins very capable as a pass receiver. Seven scoring touchdowns on the other end. He may not be the biggest target, but he knows how to finish it out of the backfield. Prescott pulls it out of the fullback's belly and fires a strike downfield to the 19-yard line. Nice catch by Jamie on Lewis. Prescott is playing comfortable and poised, and he's getting help. What an excellent job by Ladarius Perkins, showing you he can catch the ball out of the backfield on a screen. And then that powerful little frame at 5'9 and 200 pounds, digging in on the inside rush, allowing Prescott to step up. I'm really liking the mix of run pass right now and the aggressiveness of Mississippi State offensively. 34-yard gain, a handoff to Perkins. Looking spry on that bum ankle that time. Picked up about seven, brought down by Jake Holland. Second and about three to go. You get a defense on their heels, Mark, when you have that kind of balance, when they don't know what's coming, when you're not one-dimensional. And what have we seen? Some quick passes, some screens, some shots down the field. Dan Mullen is right. If Dak was going to play, you would not see a limited playbook, and we haven't in this first half. Perkins in the backfield. Two on the play clock, and they're going to call a timeout. Dan Mullen's offense right now, a uh, picture of balance and efficiency, Brock, on this drive. Uh, the perception of Dan Mullen's offense is, is the, the high tempo, fast moving. Is it living up to what most people think it is right now? I think excellent coaches have to do what? And we talk about this all the time on the college football road. You've got to play to the strengths of your individuals. And right now, Dak Prescott does what? Well, he's a physical runner, and he can handle that zone read. And you're also seeing some emergence of your receivers. Mm -hmm. It will be so critical for them this season. If they're going to get to a bowl game and get to seven wins, those people on the perimeter have got to play a whole lot better than they did the first couple weeks. Yeah, this is a team still looking for its identity. When we had a chance to meet with them a little bit earlier this week, they talked about still finding out who they are and who the leaders on this team are. And isn't it really identity for both these teams yeah. tonight? And we talked about the sense of urgency, and you're seeing it played out. Is it sloppy at times? Yes. Have there been busted coverages and mistakes? Absolutely. Are these two teams competing for the championship in the SEC West? No. But I think both of them are very much competing for that bowl game, seven wins, showing that, hey, this thing is going in the right direction. And for Dan Bowlen, with so many new young pieces, well, making them feel comfortable. There's five seniors dressing out with Darius Perkins in the backfield. Prescott keeps it himself. Nice tough run and gets the first down. Put his hat down and picked up four. And it's first and goal for the Bulldogs inside the tent. Ninth play of the drive. Between the tackles, it's Perkins again. Picks up about three, second and goal from the five. He's a tough target to find, isn't he? You can see him there amongst his linemen. This is a big offensive line. 6'7", 3'10", 6'4", 305, 6'4", 305, 6'7", 3'10", both tackles, enormous guys. And number 61 right there, arguably their best player, Gabe Jackson. The pass incomplete, thrown low for Johnson. Johnson didn't have much of a chance that one. And it's third and goal coming up. And that's unfortunate. They had everything they wanted, all the pressure inside. This is going to be a touchdown. This is no doubter. If he puts that on his front shoulder, mm. Whitehead's chasing around the block. That's that's too bad. That's just simple execution, pitch and catch. They're three of five on third downs. 
Third and goal. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Matt Prescott kept it himself and took it in for the score. His second rushing touchdown of the season, the sixth of his career, and he's taking the reins of this offense with a lot of authority. This offensive line's doing a nice job of getting a helmet on a helmet, and Dak makes one guy miss, no hesitation into the end zone. And they're going for the two. It's all based on the numbers and the look right there, and this is why is there is no reason whatsoever in the first half of the game to chase mm -hmm. points. They're going to change it up and kick the extra point. Devin Bell. Mississippi State. Down by just a single point now, 14 to 13. On a pretty methodical, workmanlike, impressive drive led by Dak Prescott. The backup for now. All right, Wendy. Well, I had a chance to watch Oregon last week oh. against Virginia. Their speed is lethal. I'd be real curious what Butch Jones, the new head coach there at Tennessee, what he, with true serum, would yeah. say about what he experienced in Eugene today. Kyle Frazier in a quarterback. The Wildcat look. Keeps it himself and runs between the tackles. Picks up a couple of yards. Out to the 28-yard line. You know, it was interesting, Brock, listening to the head coach, Gus Malzahn, talking about the number of different quarterbacks he's had as his time as offensive coordinator. He hasn't had one guy for very long. He's never had him for back-to-back -back <laughs> years, which is incredible. He's also never had a guy just for five weeks. Every other opportunity, he at least had spring ball. Not the case with Nick Marshall. Marshall back in at quarterback, takes the snap and hands it off to Mason. Mason kind of make a little music down there in the field, picks up three yards on the play. Mason familiar with the tunes and music. His father, a member of the former rap group De La Soul, several platinum and gold records. Back in the old times, Brock, like you and me. Let's not pretend we don't remember, okay? 80s, late 80s, early 90s. Third down and five coming up. Mason still in, and their most experienced running back. It's a pretty big third down with Mississippi State regaining some of the momentum, quieting this crowd a bit. They stopped the Tigers last time on. And through the arms of the intended receiver, Sammy Coates, and the Bulldogs defense gets another stop. Three and out for Auburn. I think that's what you call alligator arms. Unfortunately, feeling the people around him was Sammy and not focusing on a dart. And I mean, that was a dart for Marshall. You see Red Lashley coming over and giving him a high five. No hesitation on that throw. Sammy's got to bring that in. Clark in for his second punt. Kenyon Lewis standing at his own 25-yard line. Lewis calling for the fair catch at the 21. And uh, the Bulldogs seemingly getting, or at least stymieing, some of the Tiger momentum that they had a little bit earlier, Brock. 48-yard punt, nothing on the return. And earlier, unfortunately for Mississippi State, the first quarter and a half of this game, it was missed tackles. And, and against an offense like Auburn that wants to put its people in space in a, in a running quarterback, you've got to make these plays. And this is largely why Auburn scored on the first three possessions. And really, the last two possessions, I'm guessing a stern talking to from defensive coordinator Jeff Collins, animated, emotional. He was excited to play this game down on the field pregame. A much better job from his veteran unit, veteran front seven of Rappin. On the carry, this is Ashton Shumper, the impressive true freshman from a week ago. Piled up almost 100 yards rushing. And you know, one player, not Shumpert that is conspicuous by his absence defensively for Auburn, Chris Frost, was ejected, disqualified from last week's game because of a targeting penalty. He will be eligible for the second half of this game, and he's a vital cog defensively for them, right, Brian? Yes, right in the middle, number five, Jake Holland has had to play this entire first half. 
On the handoff, Perkins made one guy miss. Perkins coming alive a little bit. Stopped about a yard short of the first down. Picked up about seven. Here's a look at Frost and the targeting penalty that he was called for against Arkansas State. And it does not matter that he goes with the hands. Remember, the defenseless opponent, as the quarterback was there, releasing the ball and the contact initiated to the head or neck area. That's what drew, drew the ejection and the suspension here in the first half. At one of the points of emphasis this year for the officials. Perkins in on third down and one. And Prescott takes out his do-it-yourself kit and gets the first down at the 38. <laughs> First down and 10, approaching two minutes to go here in the first half. Mississippi State with two timeouts remaining, a chance to put some points on the board here. And the dual threat nature right now of Dak Prescott has quieted this Auburn defense. Right now, they are guessing a little bit, not knowing what's coming. An excellent mix of run and pass as well has contributed. 49 yards rushing so far on eight carries. Complete underneath to the 42-yard line. A five-yard gain. Malcolm Johnson, the 6'2 tight end, the junior out of Tuscaloosa making the catch. You gotta start paying attention to that clock, and you see the urgency here pick up for Mississippi State. They've got a couple timeouts, but just a minute 30 left. Second and five. Prescott out of harm's way. And a flag thrown at the 36-yard line as Prescott went down hard. Ben Bradley and Jake Holland there to make the stop. Do you want third and seven or second and 17? Holding. Number 27, off at. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remain second down. Perkins the perpetrator that time. Well, they say that uh, Devin Bell can kick it well, from about 55, maybe a little more than 55 actually. Coach Mullen said he'd give him a shot from 65. If it's at the end of the half, well, all bets might be off at that point. But still 121 to go. Trying to get in the field goal range at least. Josh Robinson in the backfield. Brandon Hill sets. Pass complete to Morrow. And Morrow brought down at the 35. It's going to be third and long. Use a timeout if you're uh, Gus Malls on here. We've seen this situation a few times today. In fact, that Texas A&M and Alabama game, UCLA, Nebraska before the end of half. And I think Gus Malls on, like those coaches in that game as well, looking across the sidelines to see what Dan Mullen's going to do here. If he has a more experienced quarterback, if that playbook is a little bit deeper, I bet in the years to come, this is going to be a timeout for the offensive mind. But not the case here. Baby steps at the beginning of their building the foundation of their program. On third and 12. And off is to Robinson. And now the he brought down. Gain of about one on the play. Fourth down coming up. The Bulldogs will have to punt 28 seconds to go. And a timeout called by Auburn as they burn one of their three remaining 28 seconds to go when we come back. Auburn looking at fourth down. Mississippi State getting the stop. With 28 seconds to go and uh, so much talk, Brock, about uh, targeting a point of emphasis but form tackling a little bit of a lost art these days, right? So much concern that the physical nature of football is going to be lost. Watch Jake Holland. That is textbook. That is targeting the chest and putting your face mask right through the sternum. And as a quarterback that's taken a few of those, that hurts. That's painful. Can you teach defensive players to lower the target a little bit? Can you get your head up and eyes up and still bring punishment, still bring devastating hits and contact without having to go and target the head? I think you can. And I think that shot there by Jake Holland illustrates it beautifully. It was interesting in meeting with Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator, first year defensive coordinator here at Auburn, when he talked about teaching a different way of tackling 
how they work a lot on angles these days because the game has evolved to a game that they play in space now. Absolutely. And then in that moment, Mark, and, and up in the Pacific Northwest, I spent a lot of time with Pete Carroll. And you want to talk about a physical defense, which you'll see on display tomorrow mm -hmm. night. And he's had to teach it. And he really feels like and believes, even as a guy like Ellis Johnson that's been around the game so long, that you can train players to just lower that target zone a little bit. Keep your eyes up, keep your head up, and you can still, like that shot, still deliver significant amount of impact. Swedenberg punting. And Bray back at his own 17, fields it. Looking for a block. Bray valued for his yards after contact. And after the catch, a nice punt return with 12 seconds to go. 48-yard punt, 25 on the return, and one of sports' greatest rivalries continues Sunday night. Mariano Rivera and the Yankees try to keep their wild card hopes alive when they face David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Yankees Red Sox Sunday at 8 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Uh, I'm going to get my uh, my Brent Musburger on and ask you which way to go on that uh, Seattle game oh. I alluded to a moment ago. Yeah, yeah, give me to the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, you call timeout on me. Yes. Yeah, first and ten with 12 seconds to go. Marshall has the arm strength to get it downfield. That one out of bounds, though. With three seconds to go. As Nick Marshall continues his development, continues to evolve, he'll understand he's got two timeouts. Look at the middle of the field. Mississippi State's going to give you that in route right there. Look at those receivers right between the hashes. He's got a shot to set his feet, deliver one of those ropes, take the time out, and get into field goal range. No need for the desperation throw there. This will be the last play. Down at the 10 and intercepted at the 11-yard line by the Bulldogs. Whitley. And Whitley takes it to the 41. 30 minutes in the books, and Auburn looking for its fifth win in the last six games against Mississippi State to begin their SEC schedule. Let's go downstairs to Maria. Coach, you guys scored on the first three possessions. What made your offense so effective to start the game? Well, we had a little momentum. We got a couple big plays. You know, we're not putting any drives together, getting first downs. We got to run the football better, and then on third downs, we got to convert. What effect is the dual threat nature of Dak Prescott, Mississippi State's quarterback, having on your defense's efficiency? Well, they're doing a good job. They're a good offense, doing a good job, and um, you know we'll make some adjustments at halftime. All right, thanks. Guys. Thank you. All right, Maria. At half, Auburn leading 14 to 13. Right now, we're going to go back to the studio. Wendy Nixon, and the gang, for the Outback Steak Half Steakhouse halftime report. Wendy, the operative words at Auburn: work in progress. Back to you. Uh, the greatest part about coaching the SEC is you're going against the best every week, and uh, that's what you coach for, and I feel very blessed to be a part. When people see us on film, uh, they should see our guys playing extremely hard, playing together, uh, you know, that playing good, hard-nosed football uh, with great discipline and uh, great success. I coach because I love kids. You know, I'm an old high school football coach. Uh, I love the game of football. I love setting goals and watching guys achieve them. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime. You're watching the SEC on ESPN under the lights at Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Auburn leading 14 to 13. And that guy, number 15, uh, the uh, story of the first half. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward, Maria Taylor down on the sidelines. We'll hear from her in just a moment. Auburn, a lot of anticipation around Gus Malzahn's first head coach game in the SEC for the Tigers, but 
The story of the first half, Dak Prescott making his second career start. Uh, he's made the biggest imprint in this game, he's had to say so far. Uh, yeah, and I give Dan Mullen a lot of credit because he's done an excellent job of giving the young quarterback a real mix of run and pass and playing to his strengths. He saw very early, to me, that's a conviction throw, the first third down of the game. The movement on the run allow him to get comfortable. And really, this is what he's done best. The leading rusher tonight for Mississippi State. He's really been almost the entire offense in the first 30 minutes of play. Auburn's going to have to make some adjustments defensively. You're going to see Chris Frost, their most athletic linebacker, come back after serving that suspension in the first half. But the story, well, the story was Dak the first 30 minutes. Bulldogs will get a chance on offense here to start the third quarter. Watches it back through the end zone. Watches it bounce through the back of the end zone. We go down to Maria on the sidelines. Well, guys, according to Dan Mullen, it's all about open field tackling. There's nothing schematically wrong with his defense. He says it's all fundamentals. They're not taking the right angles to the ball. And he said it did improve in the first half, but he's looking and pushing even more. And in the locker room, that was the biggest focus that he had for the defense and something that he believes is going to make a difference in this game. Well, they've slowed down that Auburn Tiger offense after the Opening scoring drive. It's the Bulldog offense on the field right now. Perkins in the backfield behind quarterback Dak Prescott. All day to throw it. Incomplete near midfield. Intended for Jamion Lewis. Well, we talked about him having a major imprint on the first half. Statistically, 83% of their total offense. So dual threat quarterbacks provide you and think of this system through the years. Think of the Tim Tebow's. When you've got that running quarterback, and that's not Tyler Russell's strength. He's not a runner, he's a thrower. And if Dak can continue to push the ball down the field and throw as efficiently as he did in the first half, it may be tough to unseat him down the road. Second and 10. Prescott all day again, this time finds the man that he was looking for last time. Lewis makes the catch, working against Ryan Smith, and picks up 20 yards. Look at the amount of air. I commented on this earlier with Auburn's offensive line. Look at the amount of space between quarterback and the nearest defensive lineman. That's unacceptable defensively rushing four, and that's a job really well done with an offensive line. That's seven on seven. That's pitch and catch. You don't even feel anybody around you. Let's you plant your feet and fire away. Scott hands it off to Perkins. That time, a good stick at the 41-yard line. Robinson Therese, a loss of three on the play. When you take a proper angle, look what you can do. You can bring the full force with you. Dan Mullen wants those angles on his side of the ball, and that's teaching tape. He bends, he fires, he wraps, he finishes. Well done for, as you see there, SEC Defensive Player of the Week, the first week of the season against Wazoo with those two picks. Second and 13. Prescott going to take off on a quarterback draw. Got the first down and then some. What a run. Prescott. Pushed out of bounds at the five-yard line. First and goal. Josh Robinson sprung him loose on the 53-yard run. Watch the lead block. Doesn't get any better than that. And we talked about that lack of pass rush. Want to know one of the reasons why? Because this kid's got nearly 100 yards on the ground, and when you have that threat coming at you, it gets the defense on their heels. We've seen it too much from Auburn tonight. They're going to mark it at the 11-yard line. Prescott keeps it. Straight arm, reaches for the pylon. No signal yet out of bounds, just shy of the end zone. Jermaine Whitfield pushed him out of bounds. It'll be second and goal. And it's just the element that he brings. A lot of conversation going into this game. Would Tyler Russell be available? Would he be cleared to play? Dan Mullen saying right before the game, well, he was not cleared for contact. And right now, hands on hips, an Auburn defense that is reeling, and a quarterback that's feeling much too good about himself. You want to know what you do against a kid coming into this venue, making this kind of start? You make him uncomfortable. And Prescott, anything but here. Into the second half. Second and one. They get it to one to get a first down. Prescott gets the touchdown. <laughs> Bulldogs with the lead. And a 
smattering of Mississippi State colors in the stands here at Jordan Hare Stadium up on their feet as they're going to go for two here. Another one of those funky formations. And now they're going to kick the extra point. Evan Bell, Dak Prescott is the holder. So they've got to beware at all times. Show to look of two. Get one. And Mississippi State leading by six. They make a statement here to open the third quarter of play. Both these teams trying to get a leg up in their first SEC game of the year. Third quarter just underway, and Mississippi State taking a six-point lead. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward, Maria Taylor down on the sidelines. Under the lights here at Auburn University. It's the SEC on ESPN, and another fantastic night for college football. It's the first lead of the game for the Bulldogs. And the second rushing touchdown tonight for quarterback Dak Prescott. All Tigers that first quarter, all Bulldogs the second quarter, and it really tests your manhood defensively coming out. Dak Prescott and the Bulldogs saying, tackle me, I'm going to run right at you, and Auburn didn't respond. Boy, if nothing else, you know, we've alluded to it a couple of times tonight. Mississippi State looks like they might have a couple of options moving forward at the quarterbacking position. Oh, there's no might. You can, you can take the might out of that. <laughs> now, what it's going to look like throughout the rest of the season, he's going to be an option. He was already an option because of how he complimented Tyler Russell. But with the rest of the speed players learning and growing and coming, well, he gives you a chance right away to make an impact. Mason coming out of the end zone and stopped up just beyond the 10 yard line as we take a look at our FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. It is Caleb Ewells, an amazing young man out of Yazoo City, Mississippi. And if you Google his name, folks, there's an amazing story, really symbolic of the type of young man that Dan Mullen is trying to recruit to Mississippi State. Three years ago, on a school bus ride, his senior year of high school, there was a young teenager, a girl, that had brought a firearm onto the bus. And Ewells using several different methods, disarmed her, overpowering her at one point, and virtually saving an entire school bus filled with children on their way to school. Great story, Mason making the catch. Actually, that's Lewis. Twelve-yard gain on the play. There's a look at the young man, Caleb Ewells. Running out near the 30-yard line. Ewells in on the tackle that time. A 6'4 junior, 290 pounds. Brock, we said at the uh, top of the show that the linebackers for the Bulldogs were the strength. You see them playing much of a role in this game so far? Well, with a lot of the quick passing, a lot of the exterior run or outside run, not quite as much, but the guys up front are holding their own. Off the fake. Off the bat it down pass, Marshall. He stepped out of bounds. They're going to bring this back. Calhoun batted it down and then Marshall said why not I'll catch it yeah get out the hashtag SC top 10 this will end up on the play tonight the most quarterback coaches teach you right there to knock the ball down not when you're a converted DB not when your strength is your athleticism a couple busted plays have been the biggest plays for Auburn here a 38 yard gain Mason on the handoff take one more look at it down to the 29 that was Mason this is in real speed real time I tell you what, Calhoun could have had that going the other way for six. Four yard gain on that last play, second down and six. Mason stopped up after a gain of about two. It'll be third down and short. 
You ask me about the linebackers. Yeah, running between the tackles has been tough tonight for Auburn. McKinney's had a nice game, but the guys up front, it starts with them. And Mississippi State's got a lot of size and length, and they try to control the front and allow those linebackers with the speed to scrape and finish. Auburn's unable to get the run game going between the tackles. And off to Grant, the speedster. Chopped down in the backfield. Wow, great open field tackling. And that's going to be fourth down coming up. A loss of three on the play. The back and forth, Mark. What did Dan Mullen want to see? He wanted to see better tackling out of his group defensively. What does Gus Malzahn go to early in a critical third down? Well, is Jeff Collins' defense going to tackle well? Will their corners come up and put their nose in? And that time, Jamerson Love does exactly that, what his coach demanded of him at halftime. On fourth and seven, this one's going to come from 47 yards out. Cody Parkey. This would tie his career long. Well, that looks pretty good. And he knocks it through with a little room to spare. Tying a career long. And Auburn now to within three. When we come back on the other side. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Prudential. Every challenge is an opportunity. Prudential, bring your challenges. And Audi, truth in engineering. Well, this game definitely not for the birds. Each Friday of an Auburn home game, the Southeastern Raptor Center puts on a Raptor show, flight demonstration, and educational program as well. This is where the War Eagle is. You gotta watch out. They, they, if you're not, you sleep on the birds, man. They'll take a little swipe at you there, Brock. Doesn't matter what size either. <laughs> Adjustment time for Ellis Johnson and his defense right now. This quarterback run is really putting the hurt on the Tigers here. Last two quarters of play, you get an extra defender in there. You force Mississippi State to throw the ball to beat you. Because right now the legs of Dak Prescott have been the difference. Well, Ellis Johnson telling us in our meetings a couple of days ago that they were precariously thin because of injuries defensively. And there's a look at Chris Frost, who was suspended for the first half of tonight's game because of a targeting penalty that we showed you a little bit earlier in last week's game against Alcorn State, yet to make an impact on this one tonight. When you talk about making adjustments, what kind of adjustments do you make against that quarterback? Well, I'd like to see one of these two safeties. He's trying to protect a corner because Chris Davis, his best corner, is out. So you've seen the two safety look most of the night, but eventually you got to get that extra defender down to tackle. Handed off to Robert Johnson, the receiver. And Johnson with a nice gain of nine on the play. So different looks with that option. It's the give and take. It's making Mississippi State earn it. As Gus Malzahn and Ellis Johnson talked to us about yesterday. So you want to try to keep everything in front of you. Yet I think there also comes a time where you've got to insert your will. You've got to dictate a little bit to a quarterback that, as I said right now, is much too comfortable. Perkins in the backfield behind Dak Prescott. And he follows his lead blocker, the tailback, and picks up that first down. He's accounted for over 80% of their total yards. Picks up eight. Look how many times those shoulders just go north and south. Very little dancing, very little wiggle. He's got some tremendous blocks in front of him. And this is what he brings to the table, what he brings to this offense that is growing on the outside in the perimeter with their skill position. He's going to be sore tomorrow. This is much, much contact he's <laughs> taken in a while, but he loves it. 12 rushes, well over 100 yards. And completes this pass. Johnson again. And Johnson, let's see where they mark this. About four yards short of the first down. 115 yards on the ground, almost 10 yards per pop when he's carrying it. And a couple of rushing touchdowns as well. Players talk about him having a more uh, extroverted personality than Russell. One player quoted as saying, uh, you know, Dak makes you migrate towards him. He's just got that energy, and he's infused it into this offense tonight. Second and three. Hands it off, and... Perkins gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and three coming up. 
and we're only halfway through the third quarter, but this becomes with the different momentum and the back and forth with two teams that really feel the sense of urgency. This becomes a pretty significant third down. And it's very clear. And they're in that down and distance. It gives them the mix and the balance. They've been effective this evening. Prescott going up top. Incomplete. And the Auburn defense will get off the field. Broken up well by Jonathan Mincy. Shaking his head, saying, not here. And anytime that DB turns his head back to the quarterback, you can have a little hand checking in the back and forth. You see how he turned back and looked mm -hmm. to the ball, as you'd expect a redshirt junior to do? That's well played. An excellent job of getting off the field. Yeah, it was Mincy that said, it's a chance for us to get our name around the league and show that Auburn is back. Swedenberg with the punt. This one will go into the end zone. Mississippi State last year was one of the top teams, number one in the nation, in fact, in the net punting game. Not what they probably wanted on that one, though. Three-point contest when we come back to Auburn. Tumors Drugs, an Auburn landmark since 1896, anchors the corner of Auburn's campus. You know, April 20th, 2013, more than 83,000 fans filled Jordan-Hare Stadium to sit in attendance Record for a day, and then later that evening, shared in a final roll of the Auburn Oaks. You saw it a moment ago. New trees will soon take their places, and the Auburn tradition will continue. Not quite the same without them. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Marshall kept it himself. Brought down to the play by Preston Smith. What do you make of the way that Nick Marshall has done so far in game three? It's been steady, and he's avoided the critical mistake, but give Mississippi State a lot of credit. They have stalled those drives because they've taken away that initial run. Exactly what Gus Malzahn said to Maria going in. You've got to get production in the early downs. Fires incomplete flag throw in the pass intended for C.J. Uzama. Dante Skinner broke it up. Pass interference, number 11 of the defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first count. Skinner's a big man at 250 pounds, and I think there's just a little bit of too much contact early. The arm around. He's our top tackler, had that interception last week in the first series against Alcorn State. Trey Mason in the backfield, along with Jay Cross. Little receiver screen complete to Reed and Reed a couple of yards short of the first down. This is where you get the tempo going. If you watch college football in this day and age and all the up tempo teams, you start to figure out really quickly when it stalls out is when you don't have success on those early downs. You get into these second and two, you start moving the chains. That's when you really establish that tempo and momentum. Eight yard gain. And off. Uh, and Mason brought down. Flag down as well. Chris Jones making the tackle. Chris Jones and P.J. Jones, who started for him tonight, grew up about 25 miles from each other. There is no foul on the play. Third down. All right, so they're going to pick it up. And Chris Jones is a monster. He's a five-star recruit, an enormous recruit. He beats the block. And he avoids, he avoids the headgear. He avoids the face mask and shows you the brute strength for a true freshman, exactly why he was so highly touted coming out of Houston, Mississippi. It's like a third and one. Got their hammer guy in there, Otis Payne. They 
give him the ball. I'm not sure that he got it. Maybe on a late push. Let's see where they spot it. If he got it, he didn't get it by much. Artis Payne, the biggest of those three backs, Mason, Grant, and Artis Payne. They spotted right on that first down line. Of course, the line is still an approximation, not entirely exact. It's one of the big misperceptions about Gus Malzahn. In seven years of coaching, he's had nine 1,000 yard rushers. When he tells you we have to run the ball to win, well, the recipe has paid dividends everywhere he's been. And when they cannot run the ball, that's when they've had the biggest amount of trouble. Well, they got the first down, Brock. You talk about running the ball. So far, the ratio of run to pass has been 70 to 30 coming into the game tonight. They show that they can uh, play a little smash ball and do it that way when they absolutely have to. First and ten. Artis Payne still in the game. Gets the call again. And maybe got a yard. Preston Smith making the stop along with McKinney. And less than three yards a carry, it's not going to be good enough. Not when that sets the table for the play pass. Not when that makes your young quarterback comfortable. That is why Mississippi State has been so effective over the last 30 minutes of play. Pass complete to Quan Bray. And no run after catch that time. Justin Cox making a nice tackle. will set up a third down. And long, and these are the situations they want to avoid. This is an excellent play. We pointed out Jay Prosh earlier. He's really been a non-factor tonight. And Justin Cox can see the sledgehammer coming at him. He ducks underneath him and finishes the tackle. Third and nine, been a problem area all season for the Tigers. Also gets rid of it quickly. Mason made a nice move. Did it on his own. Fumbled it. Bulldogs appear to have recovered they have. Mississippi State football. Preston Smith made the hit that jarred the ball loose. And they'll get the ball in great field position. That's all effort. Screen pass. Look at the amount of Bulldogs flying around. And that is a no doubter. That ball is coming out before any body part hits the ground. Preston is ripping. You take a quick shot here. After absolutely. The turnover? Oh, absolutely. The way they protected. And that's the freshman. Pardon me, the sophomore Robinson stopped up. No gain downstairs to Maria. The defensive line has been spending a lot of time in players only meetings, guys, on the sidelines. They've also had a lot of talk from Rodney Garner. They're hearing it, but now they're kind of taking ownership. You can see D Ford stepping up in that conversation, and they're trying to make it happen defensively at the front, guys. Well, Maria, if they're going to play this style of defense and look at the two safeties, they played it all night long, relying on that front to get it done. If you're going to do this bend, but don't break defense, your front four has got to be effective. Second and 12. Prescott with time. Completes it. And a nice gain to Nick Griffin out of the backfield. Let's go back to Wendy. Mark, thanks very much. A reminder on ABC, Notre Dame and Purdue. The Irish trying to bounce back after last week's loss at Michigan. But so far, Notre Dame trailing by 10, the tail end of the first half. Mark? Third and four back here, Wendy. Prescott follows the block. A flag thrown. And Prescott was brought down short of the first down at about the 40. You see the official signal hold. I think you got to take this penalty fourth and one or third and extra long. It's 
Still on the fringes of field goal range for Holding. Devin Number Bell. 63 of the offense. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, remains third down. Yeah, they push it back. And it's right in the middle of this offensive line. Maria talking about the defensive line of Auburn getting after one another. You see that instant penetration. And Dylan Day just left to grab the defender. Good time for some of these young Bulldog receivers to try and establish themselves. They come with some pressure, Auburn does. Prescott sacked. Engulfed. And the Tigers defense gets off the field. Robinson Therese. One of the first guys to get there for the Tiger defense. And it's fourth down. And you can see Dan Mullen telling his offensive line, if we protect it, we've got shots and chances down the field. But Ellis Johnson, one of his rare blitzes tonight, got that single safety look, bring the extra man, squeeze that pocket in the first sack of the night for the Tigers. Juan Bray is standing at his own 10 yard line, fourth point of the night for Swedenberg. And into the end zone it goes, it'll come back out. Well, tonight on ESPN College Football Finale, James White and the number 20 Badgers face their first true test when they face the Sun Devils D, led by Will Sutton. Wisconsin versus Arizona State tonight at 10.30 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. It's been a pretty good day so far, partner, for the Pac-12. UCLA with the win over Nebraska in Lincoln. Washington defeating Illinois. And I tell you what, I'm sold on Jared Goff, that freshman at Cal. They're down 18 right now, but... Uh, I think they still got a shot. And then all Oregon did against an SEC team coming in was oh. spot them seven and then put 60 plus on the board in a hurry. Corey Grant. Grant the speedster. Got to the corner and pushed out of bounds. About the 31 yard line, got the first down. You point out that, that Tennessee score and uh, boy, Oregon. That's going to be a nice, interesting battle this year in the Pac-12. And look at Oregon and Stanford in the North Division. First down and ten. And Marshall brought down for a sack that time. Richie Brown made the stop. Do you think they heard their coach talk about tackling? Have you just seen a little different tenacity? Really, after that first quarter where Jeff Collins' guys were reaching and grabbing and waiting. And the mindset's so very different. They have been the aggressor, taking it to the Tigers. Third snack of the night for the Bulldog defense. Marshall gets rid of it quickly, completes the pass. At the 37-yard line, found Sammy Coates, the 6'2 sophomore, and picked up 12 yards on the play. Everybody looking for a positive vibe here at Auburn. You can you can almost feel it when you walk around town. And the Gus Malzahn era beginning in earnest with SEC play tonight. You would think it's important for things to go the right way, so you don't get that "here we go again" feeling from last year. Third down and three. Marshall had it batted down. This time he can't catch it and run. And it's fourth down coming up with three seconds to go in the third quarter. And this defense, Preston Smith caused the fumble a couple of plays ago. This defense for the Bulldogs starting to make a little bit of noise and play with some energy and urgency. Well, look at that right there. Six foot six. And if you get blocked and you hear it all the time, and especially in those third down situations, a much quick pass for Auburn tonight. You're blocked. Get those big mitts up and force the punt. That's punt high spiral. 
Trying a little bit short, but takes a fortuitous bounce for the Tigers. Man, this is going to end up inside the 10 yard line at the nine for Stephen Clark. A 53 yard punt, and that punctuates the end of the third quarter play. 15 minutes to go in the SEC opener for Mississippi State in Auburn. Mississippi State going into the fourth quarter with the lead by three points. They've got the ball inside their own 10 yard line and look at those numbers when leading after three quarters 29 and 0. Nothing wrong with being a front runner sometimes. And they close the sale on the road though. Prescott, nowhere to go, but still gets about two or three yards out of it. One of my notes coming into tonight, Mark, Mississippi State lacks identity. Watching, especially the Oklahoma State game, I didn't know who they were and what they wanted to do. And we've seen a change tonight. Mm. They know who they are. They know what they want to do. It's been the quarterback run. It's been the quick passing game. The screen was effective early as Auburn starts to pressure a little bit. Remember, that's always in their back pocket. Second down and eight. Watching Mississippi State evolve. Prescott steps up. Lunges forward. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be third and long. The reason there to make the sack. Well, get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN at 10. It's Sunday NFL Countdown. Chris Berman and the gang providing all the latest news and updates from stadiums around the league right up to kickoff. And before you set your lineups, catch fantasy football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Our experts provide the latest news, injury reports, and predict the top fantasy performers. And a flag down on that last play. Personal foul. Number 93 of the offense. Third down, half the distance. The official said 93. I think he meant 63. Dylan Day. Can they get off the field? A strong run, but a yard short by Ladarius Perkins. And it's fourth and short. You don't want to think about this, do you? Do you? Is there a question of whether you're punt here or not? No. Okay. I'm paid to ask. <laughs> Dan Mullen. And if he does, I'm paid to question. <laughs> On fourth and one. They're going to measure just to make sure. Why give an offense that has sputtered yeah. and struggled and outside of one tip pass for 35 yards done nothing for two and a half quarters, any field position? Boy, that's that's real short, Brock. Nope. With a three-point lead. That's less than a yard, Brock. Dan, don't think about it. That might be less than two feet, Brock. Fourth and less than a yard. Now, can you cadence here? Are you, are you willing to burn a timeout by going hard count and trying to draw them off sides? Are you really going to take this kind of risk? That conversation, head coach quarterback tells me, hey, you make sure nobody moves. What does that say about the trust he's got in Prescott right now? Fourth and less than two feet. Two on the clock, and they burn a timeout. In the stare down, you'd have to say Auburn wins that one. And it costs them a timeout. With 13.01 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, sometimes it's a 
game of nerves. Mississippi State leading by three, just underway in the fourth quarter. The Broncos take one more look at that fourth down. And tell me about Prescott moving his head a little bit here. You've seen that called is a head bomb. Now, what normally happens in this situation is the umpire, the official, will grab Prescott and warn him and say, hey, listen, you do that again, and you head bob like that, you're going to force me to throw the flag. You ever been called for it? Uh, yes. Position. Yes. And probably never been more furious in my life. <laughs> Look at that rugby style punt. Gonna take a bulldog bounce to about the 41 yard line as we go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. It's a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update featuring South Carolina and Vanderbilt. The Gamecocks coming off a loss last week to Georgia in Athens, back home in Columbia. Connor Shaw to Bruce Wilds and no problem so far for South Carolina 35 10 over Vandy. All right, Wendy back here at the 41 yard line first and 10 for the Tigers down by three. Marshall the starting quarterback only been on campus for five weeks. Former DB at Georgia and erstwhile JC quarterback. Batted up and intercepted at the 40 yard line. Whitley and into Auburn territory it was tipped by Matthew Wells and into the air Whitley had all day to corral that ball and the Bulldogs get it right back in great field position you said the last time they had positive field position do you take a shot and this time and that's a rope but once again just a tremendous coaching job of Jeff Collins to have his defenders ready to get their hands up in the air Whitley's done it before in fact, a couple tonight, that gives him 12 in his career, right up there with all the guys playing college football, is the leader for being able to finish off those interceptions. And now, can Mississippi State capitalize and really take advantage? And will they take that shot right back? Tigers' third turnover of the night. Prescott on the out, but incomplete, intended for Robert Johnson. It'll be second down and 10. Calm yourself, young fella. <laughs> These are the opportunities here in the fourth quarter now where a first down miss like that, and that is a miss. It's an excellent call, an easy completion, everything out in front of them. The game starts to get a little bigger, Mark. Everything starts to speed up here in the fourth quarter. You've got to trust your fundamentals and be able to finish those completions. and 10, the handoff on the around. That's Brandon Holloway, and he's brought down at the 40-yard line, picks up seven, third down and three. Now you start to wonder, Dan Mullen, play caller, with Les Kenning up here in the booth, is this two-down territory? You don't go for it fourth and half a foot from your 20, <laughs> but you start to have a conversation now at third and three at the 40, as well as your defense is playing. Hey, is this our opportunity to take advantage? Am I going to make this third down call with Les Kenning there in the middle of your screen, knowing I'm going to go for it on fourth down as well? Those are the conversations going on in the headsets. 5-11 on third down tonight. Prescott with all day and open, complete but short of the first down by a couple of yards. Perkins didn't seem to know exactly where he was on the field. Now, fourth down, is this is where you go for it? Now is the game of chicken. Now is why you paid the big bucks. Devin Bell, the place kicker, we're told can knock it through from about 60 plus, but the offense remaining on the field. As well as your defense has played, I like this call. Why? You weren't going to do it from the 20. I trust my defense, and I trust my big bruiser at quarterback as well. Prescott, the big bruiser, as you call him, he gets it done. First down Bulldogs at the 32. Ryan White brought him down, but seven yards too late. You watch those last couple throws, the first down, the third down, a little bit tight, squeezing the football a little bit. What's he done best all night? He's over 100 yards rushing. Let him square his shoulders up. 
take out maybe a little of the frustration with those bad passes and move the chains. Good call. He has been efficient through the air. 13 of 24, 187 yards, 124 yards rushing. I'm going to blow this one dead. Ball start. Offense, number six, five yards. You know, Brock, in this league, First the down. SEC, it's just a matter of fact that because there's so much talent on the line of scrimmage, you're ultimately, to be successful, you've got to be able to throw it downfield. Do you see enough in Dak Prescott to be able to do that right now? That's a work in progress. There's no doubt that Tyler is better at pushing the ball more consistently down the field, but it's offset by this toughness and by setting the tone. And I think by the fact that you don't really have game changers outside right now in the stage of development. A young receiving core trying to balance things out and timeout called by Mississippi timeout. State. Mississippi they State. burn one of their that three remaining timeouts. Timeout Actually, they're down to just one now. And we're going to take a timeout right along with them. Dan Mullen looking for a little bit of a signature win here. Back at Jordan-Harris Stadium, Auburn, Alabama, and Mississippi State with the ball and the picture of balance right now offensively. 188 to 187 yards rushing, passing respectively. And the trigger man tonight, Dak Prescott, making his second consecutive start. First and 15. He keeps it up the middle. Down to the 35. Another yard on the play. And if I'm Auburn here defensively and Ellis Johnson, I like what I just saw on first and 15. You come up and you press those receivers. You start to force the issue a little bit, and you do all you can to make Dak Prescott beat you with the pass. The way that he's run the ball tonight, I want to get that extra defender down there. I'm going to play a little press man, and if I'm going to lose, it's going to be with the arm of Dak Prescott, not him going north and south running right at me. He's running north and south and nowhere to go. So at some point, the tack might have to change, as you alluded to, offensively for Mississippi State and having their receivers having to make a play on the arm of Dak Prescott, third and long coming up. Who's it going to be if you're the Bulldogs? Is it Morrill? Is it Johnson? Is it Jamie and Lewis? I'll tell you what else here now on third and 13. Keep yourself and get yourself in field goal range. Getting those extra three points. Getting something here on third and 13. You must avoid a negative yardage play. Well, almost an offside situation. Prescott throws it behind his receiver and incomplete intended for Lewis. And it's fourth down and 13. Devin Bell, the place kicker. Yeah, that hit the ground. Oh, inches. That's going to be one that Dak's going to want back. Tremendous poise to sit in there, and Dan Mullen knows it as he hits his thigh. Is that a catch you'd love to see Jamion Lewis make? Sure it is. The body expression and language tells it all. Baker Swedenberg coming in to punt. Get this one inside the 10 and they'll down it inside the five. So the Auburn Tigers under the lights at home, 98 yards away with 836 to go. That's why Mississippi State was number one in the nation last year in net punting. ESPN College Football Primetime brought to you by the new 2014 Scion TC made to go the distance. Three point ball game Mississippi State with the lead and a big opportunity missed a couple of plays ago on third down here Brock. Pretty shocked Dylan Day the center who's looking right at the true freshman Carl Lawson does not snap the ball there. That's that's five more yards. It's third and seven and maybe you run it. You set up a field goal and he was looking right at that defender. It's going to be a question in film study come tomorrow. 
The worst starting field position of the night for the Tigers. But Marshall completes it to Coates. Made a couple guys miss and out near the 38-yard line. A lot of breathing room before Zach Jackson finally made the tackle. And here comes the tempo. This has been there all day if he's wanted to take it. And that missed tackle, costly. A 34-yard gain. That is Payne. And he picks up about two on the play. But that missed tackle that we saw kind of breaks the trend of how well they were doing in the third quarter. Bringing guys down. Second down coming up. Second down, seven. If Marshall has gone the distance at quarterback for Auburn. Third consecutive start. Looking up top. Has a man wide open. Coates. And he overshot him. A huge opportunity that had six points written all over it. Mark, we were talking before the last break that eventually you were going to see a shot down the field. You had to. You, you get everything you could possibly want here. And unfortunately, Nick Marshall has a gigantic arm, but you could punt him that football. You could throw it end over end. That is the one thing you cannot do is overthrow it by five yards. See how he recovers here. Third and seven, still a chance. Take off with it. Got a good block on the edge and got enough for the first down. Jay Prosh, the Swiss Army knife, the guy that does a little bit of everything for the Tigers offensively with a good block to pick up eight for Nick Marshall. And that's how you compensate and overcome a miss and put it behind you. Between the tackles, it's Mason. Picked up about four. Now look at these safeties, Mark. When you take that shot, and you've got that home run, and even though you hit it foul, look at them back off. They run it up the middle this time. Mason again. Hey, let's go back to something you said earlier. You go back to a play two times in a row in consecutive tries. Why wouldn't they go back to it? Because it was wide open. We'll see if they can go back to it at some point. Under seven minutes to go, third and four. Because oftentimes on those shot plays, Mark, you wait for that moment and that tendency, and you know you've got it, and boy, did they ever have it. Is it something that never comes back to you? Once that opportunity comes, we'll talk about that. On the other side, Gus Malls on. You can see the wheels turning. Welcome back, folks. The most powerful conference in college athletics. We live on a new network. SEC tradition has found a new home. That's right, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more information, go to www.secnetwork.com. There's a look at the place kicker, Cody Parker. He's had a successful night. They figure he can go from about 52 yards out. You see the green line. That's where the line of scrimmage has to be for him to make the 52-yarder. This is Grant trying to bring him closer, but they string the play out. Nowhere to go. What a phenomenal tackle by the little guy as well. Jamerson Love, 5'10", a buck 75. He got knocked out of that Oklahoma State game. And that's bringing everything I got at 175. Fourth down and three coming up. And the punting unit comes in with six and a half minutes to go and a smattering, a chorus of booms showering down on the field. Two timeouts. Trust your defense. You've watched Prescott get a little bit tight. You've watched your aggressive defense start to have a little bit of an impact. Again, I think this is the right play. Nice punt by Clark, but did they down it or did it get into the end zone? They're going to call it a touchback. A 45-yard punt. It'll come back out to the 20. And clearly the ball into the end zone there. Tremendous effort. And you saw Clark grab his helmet, much like the overthrow with Marshall. Is the puncher there? You just got to know, even angling that ball and getting out at the 10 or the 15 yard line, much better than putting it in the end zone. You know, Brock, it's interesting. Gus Malzahn says his program is one that can 
contend for a national championship, one of maybe just 12 in the country. They need a win here tonight to prove that. Or at least to get it going in the right direction. Prescott trying to change the script and your thoughts on uh, where he thinks Auburn is in the big picture. Well, he knows he's a ways from that. He also knows they won a national championship here, albeit with a pretty good quarterback. He became the number one pick and won a Heisman Trophy. But setting that edge, being more physical, finishing what we have seen here out of Auburn in the fourth quarter, and as we talked about, all the work that you've done, this is when it gets validated. This is when the players say, yeah, this, this is going to work. The system's going to work. The style's going to work. He feels so much better, and that validation often comes with wins. Second and nine, Prescott, dangerous throw into coverage. Almost picked off by Ryan White, who got the start at corner tonight. And it's going to be third down coming up. And that's why you punt. That's why you don't get too emotional. That's have, why you, have you seen that edge from that defense that we talked about? I've seen it with the calls. I've seen the extra defenders come down. You look at the press man coverage. It's been a different fourth quarter for Auburn. Gotta hurry up, one time out left. And they're gonna burn it. Mississippi State, without a timeout now, and five and a half minutes to go. The Auburn defense gonna try and give the offense one more chance. Man, huge day in sports. Coming up next, Sports Center for John Bucci-Gross, Jay Harris, Alabama survives. The Johnny Football Experience in College Station. Pac-12 making a statement today and a big fight tonight. Money Mayweather and Alvarez. A couple of undefeated. Money down right here. And just listen to the faithful. They know it. Prescott got rid of it. Complete. Close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Jamison Lewis made the catch, and they're going to spot it short. Now, another huge decision, or is there a decision? Hunt. <laughs> a frantic looking head coach. He's going. Wow. With no timeouts remaining. They can't take a timeout because they're out of them. They did that once already tonight. Oh, no, they're going. Prescott gets the first down, making a statement with his legs and keeping the drive alive with 4.37 to go. That was huge. That was Les Miles-esque. <laughs> That's unconventional. That's trusting what you've seen from number 15 as a runner, much more than a passer. And that's keeping your defense on the sidelines as well. <laughs> two for two on fourth down tonight. Approaching four minutes to go. Prescott made a nice move in space, but brought down at the 32-yard line by D. Ford. And uh, now the question begs, how conservative, how aggressive are you if you're Mississippi State offensively with the time remaining? Well, you've already <laughs> shown that you could be as aggressive as you possibly can going for it. Or if you wouldn't have gotten it, you put Auburn in field goal range. But you've got to take every second here off of that play clock. And if you're Auburn, you've got to start thinking about those timeouts. Perkins alongside quarterback Prescott. Perkins on the handoff. A couple of nice moves beyond the 35 out to the 37. Third down and about uh, three to go. Uh, if you're Auburn, when do you start thinking about taking a timeout? Well, you're thinking about getting off the field here on this third down. And also, if he just went for it, 
where he did, this better not be a fourth and one or you're going to get it again. Tied the defense trying to make a statement here, looking to bring that edge that this Mall's on and Ellis Johnson are trying to bring back. It's got to be Prescott run, doesn't it? You would think that's been the popular choice. Kept it himself, but will come up short by about two yards. So fourth and two is a lot different than fourth and what it was the last time we saw fourth down. Fourth and one, especially at this time and juncture with two and a half minutes to go. And it looks like the punt unit will come on. So they staved it off last time, but not this time. This will be the seventh punt of the night for Swedenberg. And you're right on the threshold of burning one of those timeouts. You don't do it now. That would have been the decision earlier. He wanted to see Dan Molins move to Gus Malazan before burning the timeout. And Swedenberg gets off a great punt. Back at the 11-yard line. It's Gray. And Gray with nowhere to go swallowed up. Great coverage by the Bulldogs back at the 12-yard line. A 49-yard punt. And nothing on the return with under two minutes to go and two timeouts remaining for the Tigers. A little over 50 yards. That's got to be the first conversation. Hey, you work on these situations and scenarios all training camp long. Two-minute drill. You're an up-tempo offense anyway. You got two timeouts. No need to rush or panic. And the first thought is get yourself into field goal range about 50 yards to do so. Talking about getting it down to about the 35 for the line of scrimmage to make that field goal happen. Trey Mason in the backfield alongside Nick Marshall. Marshall on the quarterback draw. And tackled at about the 17-yard line. Is this where they use a timeout or not? Clock running still. You are up-tempo. You have got to have had two calls played or get to that second call very quickly here. Second and four. Gets rid of it quickly, complete. That's going to be a first down. Nice catch by Marcus Davis, who was hit immediately. True freshman with a big play right there, under one and a half to go. Clock stops, move the chains, watch that buck 29. See how many of these precious seconds disappear while they're looking at the play call. That's too many. That is too many for an up-tempo offense. That's 10 seconds right now. Marshall over the middle, completes it at the 40-yard line to Davis again. Clock stops. They'll set it down and be ready to go again after the 17-yard pickup. Still two timeouts remaining. Got to get down to the 35 to get into Parkey's field goal range. Another completion. Another one to Marcus Davis. That's three in a row. And there's a look at Cody Parkey. Will he get an opportunity? He has a career long of 47. Auburn looking for its first SEC win in 11 games. Will it come tonight? Second and four. And will Jeff Collins be content to keep those two safeties and everything in front of him? Field and complete. Boy, that's a nice throw. And again, this time it's Jalen Denson, a 17-yard gain. So they're in field goal range now with under a minute to go. Just a yard away and another completion. This one to Marcus Davis. He's been the favorite target. That's his fourth catch on this drive. Parkey getting himself set on the sidelines, kicking into that net. Amazing what a first down and tempo can do to a defense. That first first down was so critical to this drive. Hey, at what point do they start thinking about six instead of three here? 45 seconds to go. Marshall going to take off. And nowhere to go. Pushed out of bounds by Cedric Giles. Picked up two. Still two timeouts remaining. 
Parkey's already made three field goals tonight, three of three from 40, from 19, and 47 yards. Boy, Nick Marshall, the quarterback, uh, growing up quickly. Only been on campus for five weeks here at Auburn. And in the pressure cooker tonight. And a little too much hot sauce, perhaps, on that one, intended for Coates. As it stands right now, it would be a 42-yard field goal attempt. He's made 17 straight inside 45. With two timeouts, Mark, and as poised as Marshall has been on this drive, you're not thinking field goal right now. You take a shot here into the end zone at some point? Yes. 34 seconds to go. Dropped through the arms of Marcus Davis, who had been so effective up until that one. True freshman, Marcus mm. Davis, never in this moment. Nick Marshall, never in this moment. These fans feeling it. Gus Malzahn, don't be greedy. Don't force it if it's not there. 29 seconds to go and two timeouts remaining. Take what the defense gives you. Marshall going to take off. Boy, he's got some real estate. Out of bounds, gets the first down at the 14-yard line. 21 seconds to play, an 11-yard game. First and 10. That's the challenge with the pressure. They bring the extra people. They blitz. He gets out. Two timeouts. You can take your shots into the end zone. The entire playbook is open to you. Watch in motion. Mason in the backfield. Mason on the draw. And chopped down a good tackle that time. Timeout. At about the 12. And call timeout did Gus Malzahn with one timeout to go. 13 seconds. The ball placed just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line. Are, are you being aggressive here on this first call and then settle for a field goal if it doesn't work, or what's the mindset of Gus Malzahn? The ultimate, the ultimate test right here, Mark. Yesterday, how many times did he tell us, hey, we're not where we're going to be. I'm still learning my quarterback. He's only been with me five weeks. We've called it pretty close to the vest. We've protected the football, protected him as much as we possibly can. But what has Nick Marshall done on this drive? He starts to earn the trust of the play caller and the head coach. And that's why with one timeout, I can't say it enough. Get to your best play. Run or pass. Get to your best play. And Nick Marshall, you protect that football at all costs. Yeah, he's been hot on this drive, Brock. Five of seven for 65 yards using his arm. And some nice runs as well. Got an 11-yard scamper just a moment ago for the first down. Remember, Mississippi State went for two earlier in the game. Missed it. Had they gone for one, hey, it'd be a four-point advantage. And it would have to be a touchdown right now for Auburn. Instead, we've got a different script with 15 seconds to go. 12th play of the drive, second and seven. Watch 81 at the bottom of the screen. Big receiver. Go up and up. Open touchdown! Yuzuma, you call it well! C.J. Uzma. They are reviewing this. And one more look. Boy, he fought his way 
Lose to and I don't think there's any question about that. It's smart in this moment. You want to look, did he go out of bounds first? Clearly there was contact and he was pushed and forced out of bounds. You see the hat come down. And if he's forced out of bounds with that contact, he can come in and make that catch. He's six foot four. We asked Rhett Lashley yesterday, Gus Malzahn, you like him down in the red zone, don't you? They've taken shots to him this preseason. They haven't hit him, excuse me, in the first two weeks of the regular season. Did they hit him? And did they hit him ever at the most, in the biggest moment of this season yet? Well, he was battling Cedric Giles. Mississippi State with no timeouts remaining. C.J. Uzuma, the 6'4 junior, with arguably the biggest catch of his career. High school quarterback, versatile athlete, somebody that will grow in this system as well. I told you earlier about those shots. When do you take them? After further review, the ruling is that the receiver was pushed out of bounds, came back in and caught the pass, touchdown. And what about the poise of that guy, number 14, Nick Marshall? He was so efficient on that final drive. He moved it down the field. Six of eight passing the football. And a key run for 11 yards to get a first down. Adding to that, the extra point good. And the Tigers lead by four with 10 seconds to go. Coach Malzahn was looking for a little bit of feel good in the wake of tonight's game, and I think he might have it. Look at his reaction after this great play. Use him on Giles battling down the sidelines. That's six foot four <laughs> against a five foot ten inch red shirt freshman. I said to you earlier, sometimes you keep those shots in your pocket. You're waiting for the right time at the right moment. They've taken those shots to use them uh, earlier this season, and they waited till that moment when they got that formation, they get that matchup, they get their big guy on a redshirt freshman, and most importantly, Mark, they take advantage. Interesting how things come around when you talk about Nick Marshall, the quarterback, Brock, uh, at junior college last year at Garden City. There he is. Gus Malzahn wasn't able to recruit him initially but then got him to come to Auburn after he got the job here at Auburn hey you're going to play the game this way where you're trying to build that foundation and learn a little bit about your quarterback and eventually Gus is going to open this thing up but he played it for that moment and his quarterback delivered and you better boot this as best you can. Don't mess around in my mind with a squib. You boot this thing as far as you can. 10 seconds to go. Just like that. Mississippi State without a timeout. Mullen with some last second instructions. And really, the lack of timeouts did not come back and burn them. And this isn't a situation where you're sitting there saying, oh, man, if we had that timeout left, it was Auburn's execution. The inability to get that stop at the most critical moment defensively for Mississippi State. Looking at a big Ben right or a big Ben left here, I guess, right? Prescott lets it fly, caught at the 43, and that's it. Auburn has its first SEC win in 11 tries. And the Gus Malzahn era in the SEC has begun on a positive note.
as we go downstairs to Maria Taylor with the coach. Coach, Nick Marshall goes six of eight on your final possession. What's going through your mind as you're watching him march yeah, down the you, field for that touchdown? Right. I'm real proud of our guys. They found a way to win. We played really bad offensively in the second half. They found a way to win. That's what we've been asking. You talk so much about that edge. Did you see it today? I think so. I mean, we beat a good football team. And, you know, we were down, faced adversity, and they found a way to win. What do you feel like is the biggest part of the adversity that they had to overcome in this game? Well, just the, the, the back and forth thing. And then being down and having to respond. I thought that was a big part of it. What ultimately the effect of this leaves as you look forward into the rest of your SEC season? Yeah, hey, we got some momentum now. Big win for us. Uh, we're going in the right direction. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Auburn has now won five out of six to start their SEC season against Mississippi State, and they got a little bit of that edge. They got a little bit of their swag back tonight, winning 24 to 20. Don't forget, coming up next, Sports Center for Brock Heward and Maria Taylor. I'm Mark Jones, the folks at Tumor's Corner talking about getting aboard that Gus bus. Good night, everyone, from Auburn, Alabama.